Welcome to another episode of Forecast Lab. The weather rather quiet around the country, but in the southwestern U.S., a major Pacific weather system. There is our west coast sector. In addition to the storm over the California region, we have two large ones further upstream over the Pacific. So let's look at the weather closer to home. We do have a split flow pattern, and when we have that kind of situation, the charts do get a little bit more complex. It's almost like you take a hatchet to the little fronts and lows and highs, and you get kind of a mess like what we see here. The southern stream supporting the California weather system right there, I did have some trouble finding the warm front. I, I think it's down here in Arizona. It does seem to divide this warmer air over northwest Mexico from the cooler air in the Great Basin area. The northern stream is up here, and it is supporting this low there in Illinois. That's producing some rain and thunderstorms across the Ohio River Valley and supporting this warm front, which is our active zone of weather this afternoon. The dry line has made a reappearance over Texas, dividing these 60s dew points from 20s and 30s further to the west. A quick check of weather in different regions of the country, the northeastern U.S. still enduring cold advection, but it's rapidly switching over to a warm advection regime. The warm conveyor belt flowing up from Tennessee, Kentucky, and up into the Great Lakes area. Temperatures today range from the 30s and 40s in New England to the 50s in Virginia and Kentucky. Across the Great Lakes, most areas were around the 40 degree mark. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a marginal risk of severe for Kentucky, Southern Illinois, and parts of the Missouri Boot Heel, and they've upgraded this to a slight risk down there around Paducah over to Cape Girardeau. We checked that out with a satellite loop. We can see transverse banding out here indicative of higher SRH air. And here is the deeper convective elements trying to get established. Let me see if I can freeze that on the very last frame. And we can see what looks like a highly sheared anvil right there, the very beginnings of a thunderstorm, and that'll probably track there into the Paducah area over the next hour or two. And we see the beginnings of that thunderstorm activity, which will be tracking eastward during the evening. Overnight lows, once again, quite cold in the northeast, freezing conditions across all of New England, most of New York, northern Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Then high temperatures tomorrow, maybe a few degrees warmer, New York City up to 49, Chicago 42 to 45, and they will see 56 on Thursday. In the southeastern U.S., lots of fair skies. It was mild through the Carolinas, warm through the rest of the southeastern states today, 80s from Arkansas to Florida. We did have dense fog advisories earlier today from about Baton Rouge to Mobile, Looking at the temperatures tonight, warm and muggy from Louisiana up to Tennessee. Further east, still cool weather hanging on with 40s and 50s. And for tomorrow, a big warm-up up to the 80s as far north as Augusta, Birmingham, and Hot Springs, Arkansas. In the Southern Plains, one of the warmest Novembers on record, DFW Airport, 12 out of 16 days this month have been above normal. Seven of those days have been 10 degrees above normal. Yesterday's temperatures were 20 degrees above normal for the date. Oklahoma City, same story, 12 out of 16 days above normal, and they were 21 degrees above normal yesterday. Brownsville reached 93 yesterday, breaking yet another daily record, 86 at College Station, tying a record, and we saw 90s today west of Fort Worth. A Pacific storm system is on its way, still quite a ways out there west, but we will see drought conditions being broken tomorrow, maybe tomorrow night for Central Texas. They've got a flood watch for this entire area, two to four inches of rain expected from about Sonora Junction all the way up to Brownwood. Here's how the temperatures are looking tonight, 60s all the way up to the Red River. This is indicative of the moisture supply working northward. And for tomorrow, very similar to today, 80s widespread all the way up to the Red River, 70s further north. And then on Thursday, I'll give you the map for that. You can see the cooler air working in from the west. 
In the northern plains, cool weather permeated the Great Lakes and the northern plains. 30s and 40s as far south as Nebraska. We found 60s in Kansas and up to near 80 in the Ozarks. It was rainy yesterday in South Dakota as that tropical moisture funneled northward. We saw about three quarters of an inch at Huron, South Dakota, quarter inch at Rapid City. Winter weather advisories were in effect in central Wisconsin earlier today for the Stevens Point area. They were expecting an additional one to two inches of wet snow. Minimum temperatures overnight looking like this, quite cold up there in the Michigan UP, northern Wisconsin, and warming up to the 30s across the central plains. Tomorrow we will see a warm up in most places, especially in Nebraska and South Dakota, up into the 60s there, 63 for Denver. In the southwest, showers and thunderstorms moving into Arizona. There's a couple bands, one right there, one further west, that's producing some much needed rain. Other convective elements around the Las Vegas area. Let me go ahead and give you the radar for that. As you can see, some of this wraparound still impacting the Sierra Nevadas. They continue with a winter weather advisory for this evening, an additional six to eight inches of snow expected above 6,000. Winter storm warnings in effect through early tonight above 7,000 feet east of the Owens Valley into southern Nevada. One to three inches of snow expected there. And of course, that's due in part due to that wraparound reaching into the valleys. Winter weather advisories continue through early Wednesday on the mountains of southern Utah, above 6,500 feet, about two to six inches of snow expected there. Flood watches and advisories stretch from the Owens Valley across southern Nevada into northwestern Arizona, including Kingman and the lower Grand Canyon. There's your overnight lows for tonight, 50s in the deserts, 46 for Los Angeles, 40s through the San Joaquin Valley, and some very cold conditions in Nevada. We do have a freeze watch in effect for the Indian Springs and Pahrump area for tonight. Temperatures for tomorrow, rather cool. The hot spot, Imperial, California, with 68, same for Tucson, with 68, 65 at Phoenix, 58 at Las Vegas. And in the northwestern states, not a whole lot going on, but considerable stratus and fog in some of the sheltered valley locations in Oregon. Temperatures were in the 50s just about everywhere, upper 40s in Puget Sound. For tonight, overnight lows in the 30s just about everywhere, 36 at Portland, 38 for Seattle. And we warm up tomorrow to some rather cool readings, looks like 50s and 40s just about everywhere. Some cooler air in Montana as cold air flows southward and the highs will only reach into the 40s through that area. And we go west, young man, into the Pacific and we pick up that large storm system which has taken aim on southeastern Alaska. I don't know if we have any viewers out there, but you can watch it unfold. This very large warm air advection regime approaches southeastern Alaska right there British Columbia coast runs from here to there. That's going to be Prince Rupert, Vancouver Island, and Vancouver. And you can see that strong pressure gradient approaching. And they're going to get the worst of it sometime around midday tomorrow and into the afternoon. And then those gradients taper off. But the southern tail end, that works down the coast Wednesday night into Thursday and gradually reaches Vancouver early on Thursday. And yeah, you can look at that. I'm not going to spent a lot of time on this, but you can see that storm system sliming into the coast right there, pretty quiet through the remainder of Canada. And as we go into the 8496 hour period, you can see the absence of anti-cyclogenesis up there in northern Canada. That's not conducive to bringing cold air south. In fact, that brings warm air north. So we're going to have to wait a while, I think, on that cold weather. We could get some cold air masses coming in from the Pacific, but those are not going to be record-breaking. Now, we will have to watch this area right here because that is the storm track, and some of these frontal systems will be effective at pulling some of that cold air down. So it's not bitterly cold air up there in northern Canada, but it's enough to make a difference in the lower 48. You can see that working into the central U.S., and we're going to go over this in the U.S. charts a little bit later. And I think at the very end of the period... 
northerly flow up there in the Canadian Arctic. This looks a little bit more active, but any major incursions of cold air, those are going to come in December, if at all. We'll have to see about that. And I'll give you a quick look at the Canadian temperatures chart. We see pink up north, which is fairly mild for this time of year, maybe close to seasonal normals. Definitely not bitterly cold Arctic air. And as we go into the weekend, not much going on. Then for next week, towards Thanksgiving, which is on Thursday, you can see some of that cold air does get pulled southward. And we see some of that pink flying there into the northern plains, the northern high plains. Those are temperatures around 0 to 10. So again, not super cold air, but it will represent a change at least. And now we're starting to see some cyan colors up there. We're talking about minus 10 to minus 20. And in the depths of winter, we tend to see the oranges and yellows. Definitely not anything like that yet, but we'll keep an eye on that. The 500 millibar chart, this is the key to the general weather pattern. And this shows that split flow. Northern stream about like that, the southern stream around that big vortex there in California. Now that vortex is notable at 500 millibars, about three miles in the atmosphere, three miles above the ground. There's the minus 10 isotherm, there's minus 15, there's minus 20, and minus 25. So that is a cold core structure as we would expect. But up at 250 millibars, we're up in the stratosphere. Temperatures minus 48 to minus 50 through this region, and it warms to minus 40. And at 200 millibars up at about 40,000 feet, the isotherms show minus 50, minus 48, minus 46, and minus 44. So there's a warm core there. That's a warm sink as subsidence from the stratosphere responds to that upper level divergence in the upper troposphere. So that subsidence is adiabatic warming, and that's what's going on there. Those temperatures around minus 46, those are near the all-time maximum temperatures at that level for this time of year. But we're a little bit more concerned with the forecast. We're going to see this trough drop in across California and form another cutoff low. And it will bind up with this other low and produce kind of a double barrel structure. And that's what's happening for Thursday and Friday. So it remains troughy across the southwestern states, the northern stream well up there in Canada, and the southern stream running like that. So that is what's going to control the weather across the U.S. over the next week. Gradually, this combined trough lifts northeastward, and the southern stream begins weakening somewhat. And then they merge into the single stream pattern for the middle of next week. And it is a little bit high amplitude, some waviness in that flow. A little bit of northerly flow right through here. That's what's going to develop and give a little gentle push to that cold air out of Canada into the central U.S. So possibly for Thanksgiving, we're going to see some cool weather in this part of the country. Maybe some clouds and rain out east and warm weather in the western part of the country. And let's go ahead and look at that forecast. Starting out, we're going to see that increasing southerly flow through New Mexico and Old Mexico. And gradually that will bring the moisture northward, including from the Gulf. So by Wednesday evening, we're going to have precipitable water in Texas reaching the 99th percentile across a wide area. Del Rio, Dallas, Wichita Falls, Oklahoma City, all of them in the 99th percentile. Actual values around 1.5 inch. Strong mid-level ridging will also build in the Gulf Coast region. The 700 millibar heights, about 320 decameters around New Orleans. That's near all-time records for this time of year. And what that means is we're going to increase that southerly component by quite a bit. And that will pump up the moisture as well. So a lot of things coming together. Marginal risk for severe weather across all of West and Central Texas, including Lubbock. San Angelo, Abilene, Dallas, the risk will be primarily for a low-end possibility of supercells with large hail, mostly on Wednesday evening. Then Thursday, quite a bit of rain, lots of embedded storms all through Texas, and we're going to see 
some of the higher amounts of precipitable water concentrating in Oklahoma, but down south, extensive convective activity, again, 99th percentile for precipitable water, and that moisture will end up in some parts of eastern Colorado towards Thursday night. Anyway, all this activity begins moving eastward and moves eastward into the Mississippi River Valley for Friday, and we've got system number two right there affecting Southern California. Then we go into the weekend. The system looking a little bit drier as it moves through Arizona, a dry Alberta clipper moving through the Midwest region. And then for the start of next week, another storm system affecting Texas, probably a little bit less moisture, but still enough to get showers and storms going. And we could have a repeat of possible severe weather on Monday. Then we start looking towards Thanksgiving. We have this first front moving through the northern plains, and that will bring the cold air south Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So by the time we get up to Thanksgiving, it's going to be looking like this. Possible snow across Kansas City, Topeka, Salina. This is 222 hours out, so take that with a grain of salt. But it does look rather cold and cloudy. And you can see that this cold air blasts southward. And by evening, reaching the deep south into central Texas and pretty much a lot of cold air all through the central and Midwest region. And that will do it for this episode of Forecast Lab. Remember, you can support this program by going over to weathergraphics.com and picking up some books or software. They do make great gifts, especially the books. So definitely consider that, weathergraphics.com. Hope you have a great middle of your week, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.